Hi, welcome to Banking in SolidWorks. Um, this is the second in the series in which I deal with the how to make this ugly beast chair, this jerry can made of made of plastic. We've just dealt with um, in the first one with the how to make the ribs in this handle. Um, in the second one, this one, we'll just deal with the basics of making this can. And then in the third one, I'll deal with some of the details like the threads and the side panel. Uh, so I'm going to exit this assembly. I'm not going to save it. Um, this is what I've just done as a sort of a practice run. I've got another configuration in here, which is a blank sheet, as it were. And I'm going to insert um, the sketch or the sort of the graphic from which I'm, I might have drawn a sketch. In this case, I haven't, but you might have drawn a sketch. So the way to do that, go to tools, go to sketch tools. And here you will not be able to see, oh, wait a minute. I, first of all, I need to insert a sketch. Sketch. So you've got to go to, you got to have, be inside the sketch environment. Go to tools, go to sketch tools, and you won't be able to see it. It's at the bottom of, uh, it's outside of the frame. Uh, I'll see if I can post a little graphic of what that command looks like. And that'll go to your, your, your last used um, location in your file structure. Mine was at images, so fortuitously I'm here. And I click on that image. It'll bring it in, uh, locate it, the side of the image uh, on the origin point. And then here is what's called the scale tool. So that's this little button here. If I click off, it disappears. Um, if you do have a problem in getting this to activate because there'll be an arrow indicating that you can move the whole sketch around, Try hitting the Alt button. That seemed to work for me. Um, try that and see if it works. So I, I, the, you start off by clicking on the left-hand side, clicking and dragging, and you're going to locate this on the left hand of my sketch, and then click on the right hand and drag it across to the right hand sort of limit of your sketch. When you let go, we'll get this dialog box. Uh, that says 321 millimeters. I don't know what this is 13.9 inches. So I'm going to just type in because this is the, the age of the computer where you can just type things in. Multiply by 25.4 because that's how many millimeters there are in an inch. And say yes. Uh, I would like to see what that is, but I don't know. Um, so let's just go back here and see. It won't give it to me. Never mind. Um, oops, I seem to have altered the angle. Okay, so if it does what it's just done there to you, then you can go back to this middle button here and just type in zero. There we go. Okay, so now I want to move this around. I want to move it to a place in which my origin sort of sits in the middle and at the bottom. Um, and I'm going to redraw, I'm going to draw in first of all, whoops, so I need to exit this. So I'm still in the sketch environment, I've just exited that sketch tool. Um, I want to draw a center line like this, and then I want to draw another, here I'm going to use a normal line, a midpoint line. Um, this is because I want to give it a dimension. So I'm going to type in here, uh, that same formulation, 13.9 multiplied by 25.4 and then divided by 2. I don't know if that's going to be the right. Yes, okay, so that's exactly what it should be. So that if I, if I mult, I divided by 2 because obviously I've got to go across like this. Okay, so that's just to give me an, a, a, an idea of whether this is, you know, if this, this actual sketch picture is located correctly. So that's kind of like another scaling tool. Um, it isn't, so I just double click on this and I can drag this around. And if I need to scale it, let's say it was too small or too big, just make sure that the enable scale tool is off and then you can actually use one of these side bars and scale it. Okay, so I'm gonna scale it back down roughly to where it needs to be. Because this sketch is just a guide. So I'm gonna double click to exit it right click okay so i've exited it now i'm going to carry on sketching um let's go up by let's make that 350 
I'm going to make mine slightly larger than this because just proportion wise um, it'll be more pleasing. I don't like what I did in the other one. Okay, so that's mostly defined and here I can go from there to there. So let's make that a bit smaller, 440 perhaps. Yeah, it doesn't matter too much. Um, these don't need to be super accurate. Just they're useful for being able to drive um, what happens later, especially this angle dimension is going to be very important. That's perhaps two. Let's go to 50. Yeah, okay, it doesn't matter. Right, um, if you want the sketch to disappear a little bit, you can double click on it, go to transparency on the left hand side, go full image, and then just turn down the transparency. You can make it disappear altogether if you want. Uh, but let's go with 0.6. Okay, so there's my sketch. Um, I'm going to drag it out. I can't remember what it was meant to be. 170, I think. Something like that. There, that's 170. Looks right. Um, okay, now I am going to need a drawing of the handle so that I can figure out where to make the cutouts for the handle. So let's go back to this one just to get an idea. So I want to get those cutouts. And for that, I need to see the handle in situ, as it were. And so I need a drawing for that. Um, and the way to do that, I'm going to have to make a short video from your version. You will have a command that you can access, which I'm going to type out here. Silhouette. Silhouette. If you type out silhouette, uh, there's, some, there's another part of the command. I forget what it is. And you click on that. You'll, you'll see mine won't do it because my this is old. Silhouette. Um, Instead, what I've had to do is create a what's called a block um, out of a drawing just to get this handle in. Uh, so let's just go to the front plane. I put this in as a sketch, so it should just drop it in. There we go. There it is. All right, so this is to scale. I can put it in wherever I want. Um, um, unfortunately, in this method, it comes through with all the center marks, which I can't get rid of. But this is fine. I just need an idea of where these two holes are um, and then how far the handle should come down. So I'm going to place it something like that, maybe a little bit further over. And that's just to give me an idea as I go along of uh, how, I'm, how, I'm, how I'm going to cut this. Oh, I'm going to backtrack a little bit, this boss extrude. Um, I've extruded it straight out. In fact, what it should do is go mid-plane, 170, and that will give us all sorts of advantages. Number one is that this sketch is now in the middle, and I can project it to either side with, without any problem. And if I later on in your version of SolidWorks, you can actually do a, um, a, a draft from a spit line going all the way down the middle. I can't do that in this version, but I will make a video showing you how, that, how to do that as well. Okay, so from here, I'm going to go to this. No, we'll go back to the front plane, put another sketch. So I've got this, this other one is now kind of, I can't access it. I mean, I can, I can touch things and, and use them as the basis, but I can't move it around. So I can create um, some sort of reference lines, which I'm going to do from center to center. And uh, then um, if I'm very careful I should be able to select some of these lines and offset them um, last time I tried this it didn't work let's see I might get it right uh, okay so it's not going to do it uh, I might have to convert them first yes I think that's what you have to do so you can convert these lines one by one or all of them um, let's do that just to show you how to be smart about this Okay, convert, and then once you've got them, just say select. Don't seem to be able to select a, okay. Um, maybe this isn't the best way to do it. Uh, I'm going to delete all of those other than the center line. 
and just delete those. Okay, so uh, offsetting is not really going to be an option. It's probably going to be quicker just to draw from scratch um, a line which is kind of slightly offset from, from this line here. From there to there, up to there. Um, and here I, I'm going to put my tapers in, or my sort of, not tapers, fill it in later and get that to go a little bit like that all right and then these two will be mirrored across ah don't have a center line so put a center line in there and then just grab those two mirror them and then put in a few dimensions after i've Extended a few lines like that. Put in a, another line. All right, so I'm just going to exit this quickly and I'm going to go to that sketch and hide it and then go back into the sketch. Could probably have hidden that sketch from. And I'm doing that just so that I can um, stop having to inadvertently select the lines that I don't want from the other sketch. So these are not tapered, to just make sure that's vertical, vertical, horizontal, okay. So let's go, ah, there's already symmetrical. Uh, let's put in the dimension here, 102 looks to be about right. Um, Let's give a dimension down from there. 34. Oops. 166. And one from there to there. Okay, so the reason I'm doing this is um, I actually want to, I want to get rid of all relations to that sketch. I just needed that sketch to give me a, a base idea. Um, and I want to be able to drive this sketch independently of that other sketch. So I'm going to use my origin point to that line. Um, it says it's overdefined. And the reason for that is because I've got external references. So go to the usual display delete buttons and click in the top here, external. And you'll see there are three coincidence. Delete all of those. Right. So you, have, you might have to reestablish relationships. Uh, no, in fact, I think just as long as we dimension these two dimensions. So there's one. It's the same old story. It's position, position, position. So you need position dimensions. Type that in, 42. There's one. And we need one from there to there. Uh, let's round that off, 1423. See that? The magic of positions. So the only thing we're missing here is a height from there to this one. I want to be able to drive that separately. So that's at 9.6. Lower it a little bit, 9. And so I can now, I can reference that sketch to make sure this one's okay. I can move that other one around. But now I've got a sketch which is entirely independent of that other sketch. Uh, except, let's just put these in, we need this width, 124, that's the distance that the uh, the two holes are. So this would enable me to do a cutout and then I can move the cutout around using this dimension and that dimension and I can alter the proportions a little bit using um, that dimension in particular and that one and then this one as well at the bottom. So great, out we go. Uh, right, from here, Extrude cut, and I'm going to do it from um, a surface, that one there. I'm going to go in by, I can't remember, but let's make it 35. Um, here it doesn't matter too much. And I can put a taper in as well of 0.5. To make sure that taper looks right. Yep, it does look right. And we'll do the same again on the other side. Um, I could mirror this, but it's probably quicker just to to use the sketch again 
and say extrude cut the same story from that surface and I want to go in it remembers my last dimension it doesn't remember it does remember the degree just not to use it okay that's looking good all right so now we can put in some major um, fillets uh, let's see if I can get the That seems right. Uh, 10, should I do that on all of those? Yep, why not? And we need one other set um, once again. Okay, and uh, just a note on this. Actually, I don't think I do need all of those. These other ones I want to be larger. So I'm, gonna, I'm going to select them again, which will deselect them. Oops. Hmm. Okay, so I'm going to leave, and this one as well, I'm going to leave those ones at 10, that looks good, and then I will delete, I will sort of add other ones in here, where are we, fill it, uh, let's make this 25, a bit larger, and see if we can grab, will it give us the others, um, not that one, not that one, not that one, not that one, ah, there we go, right, um, and if you, I will be looking for evidence that you are using the shortcuts as much as possible because the point of doing this subject, part of it, is to learn how to be as quick as possible so that you don't waste time. So far, so good. Now I want to put some holes in. So I'm going to go to that face and say I want to put a sketch in. And um, these holes will be used to put in some brass inserts which have got threads in them. So I know that this is going to be an M8 hole and I cannot remember what my um, insert diameter requirement is, which doesn't matter too much because as long as I put in a dimension, I can just go and change it later on. So I'm going to make those two equal and put, yes, okay, we don't really need it, so let's leave it out because we've got it already, but we do need a dimension here. Um, so it'll be about 12, I think. 12 looks right. Okay, and then that I'm going to use to extrude cut as well. Um, about 15 millimeters. And then with the taper as well of 0.5. I'm not sure if these are the right... Um, kinds of drafts that you put in but for now we'll just assume they are okay then i'm going to use that same sketch and just make it visible go to this face say extrude um no why it's not selecting that uh Okay, let's try that again. So we want those same holes, right? And we want to extrude cut. Ah, okay, so here we go. I've selected, I've actually selected the edges, but that's okay, you can do that. Um, so we want to go from surface plane, that one there, and we want to go in the opposite direction with a half degree draft. Right, let's put in a few more tapers. 25 will not work, 4 might, ah it does, uh, let's see if this one will work, that'll work, okay that'll work, alright so which means I should be able to select the whole face, so if if something doesn't work, what you can do is, ah don't actually want these ones, um, go one by one with these, with these items, so I've actually got this face selected and I shouldn't because I want those internal ones, Okay, so I need to be careful there not to select the face because I don't want those internal ones to be four. I want them to be much smaller. And that one, and that does it. Right, one more set of fillets over here. Um, fillet and this edge here. 
seems to have selected the whole face, which you don't want. Um, actually, we might. Let's do that and just put in two. Um, yeah, that'll work. Okay, so I'm going to select the faces. One, two, three, four. So far, so good. Okay, so in the next video, I will show you how to put in the spout with um, the threads and then also how to put in the side thing. But before we do that, I've actually missed out a detail. So um, almost deliberately, in fact, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go back to another stage, which is just before cut extrude. There we go. That one there. Go to the top plane, put in a sketch. Um, sketch kind of loosely here from there to there to there to there I'm just doing a kind of a a taper um, but I find this more it's easier to control okay and here is one of the benefits of having extruded from the mid plane in that I've got my um, origin in the middle which means that um, this is great because now I can just put in a center line and I can just go like this and quickly put a symmetrical symbol on and do the same on that one, uh, which saves me some time. Why are we not getting this one here? has got a symmetrical symbol. We're going to take that off, pull that in, those two and that one there. And let's just make that symmetrical as well. Right, and then this I can pull in. Oops. I'm going to make that point and that point horizontal. Right, and then I'm going to make these two lines equal. And then I should be able to just dimension uh, from there to here once. Let's make it 40. That should adjust those ones. It has, except we've got a bit of a problem. So let's just drag that out. Oops. Okay, so I think I know what's going on here. I need to make these two lines equal. And then I need to give that, that one, mm, that one there. Let's go 150 and see what happens. There we go. Right, so now it's tapered them both. So just with just two dimensions, I, I've got my side cutouts. Let's make this a little bit larger, 160, I think. And maybe make that a little bit larger, 45. Yeah, that looks better. Okay. Uh, and from here, I can then extrude cut and go through all, um, change direction. And then say flip side to cut, because I want to cut outside of that um, shape that I've done, not inside. And it will tr have chopped them off. And then, uh, so that's the beauty of the design tree, is that you can roll back the features that you, you, sh you, know, you want to exclude from the process. And you can see here that there's a slight problem in that now that, that uh, fillet there needs to continue so I need to now roll this back a little bit because I want to put in another fillet here a larger one so remember always from larger to smaller so let's make that a nice large soft 60 maybe even more 70 80 grab the others no it's not going to do it okay and that's okay. And then if I roll this forward, um, it should fill in the other fillets. There, it's done it. Those fillets have been filled in. So, so far, so good. I will see you in the next video.